Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. We have a better covenant upon better promises, and we have a better relationship with God. All these things we strive for and work for and hope for and pray for, we already have those things because Jesus gave it all to us. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on a subject that I've entitled, Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith. And I tell you, this truth has just revolutionized my life. I used to struggle knowing what to do and how to receive from God. I've never disbelieved that God could do miracles. Even when I was taught that miracles had passed away, I still prayed for them. I still believed it could happen. I mean, if you believe in God, by definition, God is supernatural. And that's what a miracle is. And so I believe that God could do miracles, but I didn't understand uh, what He had done, what His part was, what my part was, and because of it, man, I just lived my life throwing prayers out there, wishing and hoping and praying for things, but not understanding how things worked. And when I began to understand what God has already provided by grace and how faith is just the way that I reach out and partake of it, it totally transformed my life. And so I believe that if you will open up your heart and receive these truths that we've been talking about, that this could make as big a difference in your life as it has mine. I've seen this literally set many, many, many people free. Uh, over these last few days, I've been talking about a Sabbath rest. Hebrews chapter 4 talked about that there remained a rest for the people of God, and we had to labor to enter into this rest. And I spent some time trying to explain that because most people think of rest as just being, you know, like a vegetable, doing nothing. This isn't talking about that kind of rest. It's talking about just where you trust God. You aren't burdened. You aren't taking care. You aren't worried about things. The pressure is off of you. You are totally at rest in the fact that God loves you and God has already provided everything. And in those passages of Scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, twice it talks about that there is a Sabbath rest. It likens it to the time that God rested on the Sabbath day, not because He was tired, but because everything was complete. And here's a point that I want to make. I hadn't I've kind of gone beyond this and went in and talking about what the Sabbath day was a picture of. But when the Lord rested on the seventh day, this is Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, and it says that He rested on the seventh day. On the third verse, it says He blessed the seventh day. God has never created anything new since the original creation. He anticipated all of the needs of mankind and He created everything we have ever or will ever need, it's completely done. You can see this in the life of Adam. He didn't have to go ask God for breath. God had already created enough air to supply the air needs for billions of people. He never had to ask for food. God had already provided food. He didn't have to ask water. God had already provided that. He didn't have to pray about the climate. It was a perfect climate. God had provided everything and He did not create air for Adam in response to his need. He didn't create food for Adam in response to his need. It was already done. He had already done it and he rested and God has never created more air, more animals, more food, more vegetables, more fruit, more water. He's created all of it and it's all here before we ever had the need. The supply was already here. And likewise, in the new creation... You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. There is a direct parallel between the new creation that we become at salvation and this original creation. In this new creation, God does not have to create anything for you. Now, I'm praying that you will follow what I'm saying here. This is really significant. That when you got born again, your born again spirit already has everything in it that you will ever need. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. You've already got it in there. It's already there. And yet I know so many Christians that are saying, Oh God, I'm depressed. God, please give me joy. And that they come to God like asking Him, Oh God, please give me joy. Well, the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You've already got joy. You don't need God to give you joy. You need to rest in the, what the Word of God says, that in your born-again spirit, you already have joy. And you need to start appropriating it. Basically, your joy is completely a result of what you're focused on. It says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, it says, The Lord will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon him, because he trusteth in him. If you keep your attention focused on the Lord, you're going to have peace. And you will have joy in all of the things that accompany that. The reason people don't have peace today is be not because God hasn't given it to us. We've already got love, joy, peace, long sorrow, all of the fruit of the Spirit. It's already here, but see, we aren't resting in it. When we, dis when we notice a deficiency, we're beginning to be troubled, stressed out, we're worried about stuff. The average Christian will go and say, Oh God, please give me joy. Please give me peace. When the truth is, it's already been done. And it's just a matter of, are you going to rest in it? Are you going to take the knowledge that God has given us in His Word? And are we going to focus on this and let our emotions follow these things that we've thought about? Or are we going to think like the world? Let me show you these passages of Scripture out of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, every single phrase in these verses is powerful. And we just read over them sometimes and miss this. But notice it says, we have obtained like precious faith. How many people are praying, oh God, just give me faith. Oh God, give me faith. This right here says you've already got faith. And if you go to those verses I just quoted, Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. You've already got faith. You don't need God to give you faith. What you've got to do is turn away from the things that are hindering your faith, that are blinding you to faith, that are stopping your faith, and you need to go to looking at God's Word and learning how faith works and just cooperate with it. And it's so much easier to release something that you believe you have than it is to go and try and get God to give you something that you don't have. This says you already have like precious faith. If you go into the Greek on this, the words like precious faith is talking about an identical faith with Peter. Peter's faith was so strong that he walked along and his shadow would touch people and that they were healed. You've got that kind of faith on the inside of you if you've been born again. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Peter's faith was so strong that he raised Dorcas from the dead. You've got raising from the dead, power on the inside of you. You've got the identical faith, this like precious faith that Peter had. It's already there. And yet how many Christians are asking God to give them more faith? See, you aren't resting in what He's already done. You aren't trusting in what He's already done. You are over here thinking that by faith, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask and make God do something. That will, all that will do is get you frustrated. The only type of faith that works is a faith that is just a positive response to what He's already done. It's a rest in Him. You are resting in the finished work of Christ. It's finished. He doesn't have to do something to provide for you. In verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Most people pray and say, Oh God, give me peace. Oh God, I'm stressed out. Oh God, help me. And you're just asking for God to supernaturally come drop it on the inside of you. Again, Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Peace is on the inside of you and it gets drawn out when you start acknowledging these good things that are in you. You know, Philemon chapter 1, 
In verse 6, Paul prayed a prayer here and he says, I pray that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. How is it that you get faith working? You acknowledge what God has already put on the inside of you. You go to seeing what Christ has already done, the finished work of Christ, that you've already got love, joy, peace, all of these things. And you just rest in it. And you trust in what God has done. And that's powerful. Grace and peace doesn't come unto you through prayer, through living holy, through going to church, through praying your tithes, through doing these things. It comes through acknowledging these good things that are already in you. See, that's exactly what I've been talking about. It's just resting in the fact that God has already done it. God, I believe that you've already done it, and now I get peace. You know, I've used this example, but it's just something that I'm living right at the moment, and it's a great example of what I'm talking about. But we're building this Bible college campus, and I've got an opportunity to be anxious, to be worried, to feel like I've got to do something. God, what can I do? But really what I need to do is rest. And I just have to sit there and acknowledge that, Father, you have called me. You've prepared me for this for decades. You've been leading me in this direction. And I just rest in that. And this is what I'm living right now. I am just refusing to take care and worry and feel like I've got to do stuff. I'm resting in the Lord. And that comes through the knowledge of God. The Word of God is how He reveals this knowledge to us. In verse 3, it says, According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whatever it is that you need today, if it's healing, if it's prosperity, if it's deliverance, if it's joy, if it's peace, if it's a mate, if it's, uh, you know, whatever it is, it all comes through the knowledge of Him. And that knowledge is in the Word. The next verse says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. His knowledge is what gave us these exceeding great and precious promises. So God's Word is His knowledge. His knowledge is contained in here. And if you want grace and peace, it comes through the knowledge of God. Everything that it takes to live... A godly life comes through the knowledge of Him, through the Word of God. God has already done it. Everything that you are asking God for, God has already supplied. If you're needing to be healed, 1 Peter 2, 24, by His stripes you were healed. Were. It's past tense. It's already done. You don't need to ask God to heal you. What you need to do is by faith rest in what God has already done and say, Father, thank you that I'm already healed. I believe it's mine. And I am not going to get into fear. I am not going to get into worry. I'm not going to let what the doctor says, what somebody else says, put me in fear. I believe that you have done this. And so you rest in God. This is what I've been talking about for a solid week. Hebrews chapter 4 was talking about that there is a rest for the people of God. And we have to fear lest this promise of entering into His rest, we seem to come short of it. How do you come short of it? By trying to earn the things of God. By feeling like, God, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. You know, one of the things that has helped me to rest in the Lord is that when we first got started in ministry, our ministry was so small that we, we were behind financially. There were times that we had the bill collectors call us. They turned us over to collection agencies. I hated that because, man, I, I want to be a good representative for the Lord. And I hated not being able to pay people. But there was times that I got behind and I literally had collection agencies come after me. And when our ministry was small, I used to really struggle with this. As a matter of fact, there, you know, I'm, a, I'm what they call a lucid dreamer. I've read about this in books. And I mean, I just dream constantly. It's hard for me to tell if I'm awake or asleep. I dream in color. I can start and stop my dreams. I can go to bed and dream something, wake up and go back and finish the dream or go back and change it. While I'm dreaming, I can change my dream. I don't know what all that means, but I'm just telling you this is the way I am. Things are vivid. 
to me. And anyway, back during these times when we were just getting started in ministry, I was really struggling and we had bill collectors after us and stuff. And I remember having a dream one night and I, it was so bad, I felt like I just had to do something to pay off my debts. And so I was gonna quit the ministry and I was gonna go join the Air Force and join the military and take out a job so that I could pay off all of my debts. And I dreamed that and I remember when I woke up, this was like on a Saturday morning, I woke up and I was just laying in bed looking around and I thought, oh, praise God, it was just a dream. My dreams are so real sometimes, it's hard for me to tell if it's a dream or if I really did it. And I was thinking, oh, it's just a dream. And I was laying there in bed and Jamie leaned over when she noticed I was awake. And she says, things aren't so bad that you had to go join the Air Force. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> and what had happened was I had talked in my sleep. And in my sleep, she heard me talking about this. And I went and I joined the Air Force in this dream. And then she was just, you know, joking with me. But for a split second there, I mean, absolute terror hit me like, oh, no, I've actually done it. And the reason I bring all this out is to say that when our ministry was small, and I could have gone and joined the Air Force and I could have paid off my debts or I could have gone and taken a job or I could have gone and taken out a loan and things. You know, back when there was something that I could do, I used to actually struggle with God's provision a lot more. But now our ministry has just grown so far beyond me. You know, it takes about $3 million a month for me to break even. And with this construction that we have going up in Woodland Park where we're building the Karis Bible College campus, I actually need around $5 million a month is what I need right now. And you know what? If God doesn't come through and if I don't receive, I, it's so far beyond me. I couldn't quit and go out and take a job and earn $5 million and pay off. I'm just so far out away from the shore that swimming back to shore isn't even an option. And the reason I bring this up is to say that I actually am resting in the Lord more now than I used to back when the ministry was smaller. Because when it was smaller, there might have been something that I could do that would pull the thing out, that would make the finances come in. But now I'm just so far out there that you know what? There's nothing I can do. I've got to trust God. And it's actually a good place to be. And I'm actually resting in the Lord more now than back when my needs were so small that I could have done something about it. Now it's just so far beyond me that I have to trust God and it's a good place to be. I've said this exact same thing to people who were trusting God for healing and they were believing God. And when they come to me and say, the doctors have sent me home, they've given up on me, there is nothing else that can be done. They sent me home to die. I've actually told people good. And they look at me and think, what's good about that? And I said, now you've got nowhere to turn but to God. It is easy for you now to put your total trust and reliance on God. I see people often that they will get into, they're trusting all of their herbs and their remedies and they're trusting this and they're that. And it's like a laser. A laser's light is diffused and the power leaves if you diffuse that light. The strength of a laser lies in the fact that it's all just focused. It's concentrated into that little tiny beam. Likewise, the strength of our faith is when it is completely put upon the Lord. And when people have plan B or plan C or these other things that they can trust, and if God doesn't come through, then they can, you know, take this other route out. I think that that diffuses the force of their faith. They may be trying to trust God, but they've got these other things that they're also trusting and working on. I like it when you just get to a place to where, man, if God doesn't come through, it's over. I'm dead. <laughs> Amen. I have no other source. There's no other way it's going to work. That's a healthy place to be. And this is what I've been talking about is that I am putting my 100% faith in God's grace. I believe that God by grace has a plan for my life and I am trusting it and relying upon Him and I am not feeling the pressure. I don't have stress and responsibility. I'm not burdened down with trying to make 
the things of God come to pass. I tell you, that is really powerful. I've done this same thing not only with, you know, the financial needs of our ministry and stuff like this, but I've done it with relationships with people. There's people that I wanted to have a relationship with, but rather than me take the responsibility and God, I'm going to go and I'm going to meet this person. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to become this person's friend. I just cast it over on the Lord and say, Father, if this is what you have provided, if this is you that wants me to have the relationship with this person, then I'm just trusting you. And if the Lord opens up a door, like if that person was to call me or if somebody, like for instance, I wanted to go meet with um, Oral Roberts and I had prayed about that and he was getting towards the end of his life and I just felt like Oral Roberts had something to speak into my life. And I prayed about it, but you know what? I didn't try, I didn't call his ministry. I didn't try and make it pass. I just talked to God about it. And I said, God, if this is something, if there is something that I can gain through being with Oral Roberts before he dies, then I ask you to open up the door. And so I prayed about it and just rested in that and put my faith. I didn't try and make it come to pass. And it so happened that a mutual friend of ours, a person out in Palm Springs, uh, became friends with Oral Roberts and he invited me and some other people to Oral Roberts' home and I got to talk to him. He blessed me, prayed over me and I tell you, God stirred something on the inside of me that everything I see happening right now to a large degree, that came out of that meeting with Oral Roberts. He imparted and spoke some things into my life. But see, there are people that if they have a desire for something like that, even if it's a God desire, they would take the total responsibility upon themselves to make that happen. I have people that do that with me all of the time. I have people that have been touched through my ministry. They've been blessed and they want to meet me and they want to become my friends. And I have people that come and I mean, they've listened to every teaching that I ever gave and because I use so many personal experiences, they know all about me. They feel like I'm their best friend and they just come on and I mean, they want to go home with me and they want to be my best friend. And you know what it makes me do? It makes me want to push them away because they may know about me, but I don't know about them. And when a person comes on that strong, it actually is offensive and it keeps people at arm's length. Instead, I just pray, and if God wants a relationship to work, well, then I'll believe God to open it up. And I could give you right now at least five or six things that have happened in the last couple of years that supernatural relationships are being built with people that I've wanted to get to know, and I feel like I could benefit by being their friend. And that's been going on for years. And yet I just threw it over on the Lord. I'm resting in the Lord and waiting on God to do it instead of me feeling like I have to produce all of this. And you can take this same principle and apply it to finances. You can apply it to relationships. You can apply it to healing. You can apply it to joy and peace and everything else. It's all talking about grace and faith, the proper balance. What do you do and what do you just rest and trust in God to do? Okay, so we're now on the east side of the parking garage. Behind me, you can see over here, this shows you how that it adjoins to our uh, auditorium that we've just finished and occupied. Now, all of the pavement on the inside of the parking garage is completely done. Around on the north side over there, you'll be able to drive around and it will go up, it'll slope up, and you'll be able to enter the parking garage on the second level up on the north side. And then if you continue to go around, there will be another entrance that's on the third level. So let's go around and I'll show you the opposite side of this, the third level and where you enter there. Okay, we're now on the third level of the parking garage. I'm standing on the island that separates the in and the out on the third level. This is the west side of our parking garage and they've got it closed up. They've got plastic over all of these windows and they've been heating this so that they can work in here. All of the 150 or so people that are on our phone center, all of our uh, 75 offices in CBC will be able to park on the third and the fourth level and enter there. And then the first and the second floor will be all for the students and they will go directly into the auditorium level. I just want to thank you and say that this is a modern day miracle 
what God is doing. I believe that God is blessing us and praise God, the best is yet to come. Thank you for being a part of it. We'll give you an update in about a month's time. Thanks to the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, Karis Bible College is raising up more disciples than ever before on the sanctuary property. But what if you can't make it to Colorado? Being a stay-at-home mom with three kids, it would not be possible for me to pack up and move to Colorado. I knew God wanted me to go to Bible College. I made up my mind and said to God, I said, I know I'm going, whether it's Colorado or wherever. Is there an option for you? With over 70 campus locations around the world, there is a place for you to begin your journey. If that seed's there and you've got something close to you like we do here, you've got to go for it. More than likely, God's already speaking to you about going to Karis Bible College. You just need to make the step. You will never, ever regret going to an extension school. It will change your life forever. Join the Karis community of like-minded believers by discovering a campus location near you at karisbiblecollege.org. I'd like to invite you to come to our campus days. We'll have all of our instructors ministering. We will have fellowship time together. There'll be questions and answers. And it's an opportunity for you to just come check out not only the spiritual things, but the facilities here. We have one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. You can't relate to God and find God through the surroundings. Then the word that we share will definitely bring you to another level. It'll be an awesome time right here in Woodland Park. I would really like to encourage you to get this teaching on living in the balance of grace and faith. I think this really just summarizes the position that God has given me in the body of Christ. It seems like you have people that are either into faith or into grace, but very seldom are the two combined, and this teaching would transform your life. I've got a book in English. I've got one in Spanish. We have a study guide here that is the same material. It's just reformatted so that you can disciple other people. You can print out the questions in here. And then we have a CD set of this exact same teaching. And then I have two different DVDs to offer you. One that was taken from our television program and the other one was taken live from one of my uh, meetings that I've held. So please listen to our announcer, respond today, and get this material on living in the balance of grace and faith. Andrew's teaching titled, Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith, is available as a live teaching on either CD or DVD, or in a DVD set as seen on TV. You can also get this teaching as a book or study guide in either English or Spanish. Or you can get the Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith package, which includes your choice of either the CD or DVD album, the book and the study guide, this package has a catalog value of $85, but you can get it today for only $60. Also, today's individual audio CD is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net or call our helpline at 719-635-1111. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.